Okay, first, destroy your face with a walnut scrub for a year, and then buy our $75 clarifying collection to fix it. Kylie Skin just launched their clarifying collection, which is obviously targeted at acne and blemish prone skin. And as an acne sufferer, I have some thoughts about this. Obviously, I'm very emotional about this because of my past history with acne, especially when people try to take advantage of people who have acne, rip off people who have acne, or sell them false hope. Um, I get very worked up because I know what it feels like to look like this, to struggle with this both mentally and physically. And while I understand that the Kylie Skin Collection is probably not targeting acne of this severity, uh, the ingredients list is very, very interesting. I definitely have some opinions here. So let's look at the cosmetic science, the ingredients list. Let's actually pick them apart and break them down so that we can see whether or not they're actually going to help with your breakouts. I, <laughs> I'm trying, I'm trying here. The Clarifying Collection has three different products with one skincare tool for $75, and it consists of a clarifying face oil, a clear complexion correction stick, and a detox face mask. What's actually super impressive is that all of these products are fragrance-free, which is appreciated, and when we start to look at the key ingredients, again, the ingredients they promote, there are actually some really decent ones in here, such as AHA and BHA acids, specifically that salicylic acid, which we talk about on this channel all the time, which has been proven by medical studies and approved by the Food and Drug Administration to be helpful in the treatment of acne. So that's wonderful, but they don't actually tell us how much of the active ingredients are in here. So again, let's reverse engineer this and break it down. The clarifying face oil is a face oil that has salicylic acid, so again, to exfoliate the top layers of the skin to really bind to and break down the oil in the skin and maybe be anti-inflammatory. We've got some licorice root, which can help brighten or add some anti-inflammatory benefits to the skin. Then we have this skin clarifying oil blend, which they're hiding some secrets about, that has a whole bunch of different oils, such as pomegranate, marula, rosehip, which I do love, etc. Um, and again, fragrance free. But let's actually look at the ingredients. The very first ingredient is from coconuts. It's caprylic triglyceride. It's seen in a lot of different moisturizers. The second is safflower seed oil, which is not my favorite for acne. I prefer jojoba, but it's not detrimental. We've got ethoxydiglycol, and then we get to our salicylic acid. But here's the kicker. This product does not state how much salicylic acid is in it. As required by the Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, you need to label your salicylic acid if it is above 0.5%, and you cannot go above 2% if you're selling it over the counter. In dermatology clinics, we have higher amounts, and if you buy things like wart removers uh, for plantar verrucas or something, you can get up to 40%, but for skincare, the max is 2% of salicylic acid as required by the government. Now, here's what's interesting. They're not saying how much salicylic acid is in here. But remember, the US government requires that it be labeled if it's above 0.5%. So we know automatically that there is less than 0.5% in this product. Meaning that yes, it has salicylic acid, which is a good thing, but is it really going to be that helpful? And again, that is why I believe that this is not targeted for severe acne. It's maybe for like a minor breakout here or there. Um, and there's also nothing else in here that's really going to fight for the acne sufferer. What's also interesting is that when we talk about ingredients lists, we know that they are listed in order of concentration, meaning whatever is listed first has the highest amount, and once you get to the bottom, that percentage gets lower and lower. However, there is a line called the 1% line. It's actually a secret line because it's not listed on the bottles or on the products. The manufacturer can mix around ingredients and put them in any order they want. This allows them to kind of hide their trade secrets so that it's harder for someone else to reverse engineer them, which honestly is what Kylie Skin has done with this entire line. But what makes that really interesting here is that we know that salicylic acid is something under 0.5%, so anywhere from 0.0001% to 0.5. That also means that anything that's listed after this salicylic acid has to be at less than 0.5%. So all of these other oils that they're saying are so impressive, or this licorice root extract, or this tocopherol acetate, which is vitamin E, all of this is at under 0.5%. So really, you're paying 24 bucks for this cocoa caprylic triglyceride and for this safflower seed oil. Again, I don't actually hate this product. For someone who is slightly acne prone, someone who does get a blemish every now and then around their cycle, and who really loves facial oils in their routine, this does seem like a really good facial oil. Is it going to cure your acne? No. But shockingly enough, I actually don't hate it. 
I'm trying to rack my brain for anything similar on the market that, you know, is like an oil with salicylic acid. Um, the best one that I can come up with is this one from Dermalogica, but this is the retinol clearing oil. So it's oil, but it's salicylic acid and retinol. So this is in a completely different ball game and it's like $80 or $60. So it's in a completely different price bracket. The other thing that's kind of funny is that if you look at the imagery on the website, you literally have someone touching the dropper right to their face. This is bad skin hygiene 101, but I'm not completely mad because I do it too. You see, it's true. You should not drag a dropper on your face because you could potentially introduce bacteria or whatever is on the skin into that little dropper and then put it back in the bottle. However, this is what preservatives are for. Preservatives specifically stop microbes and bacteria from growing in products, and this product does have phenoxyethanol, which is the preservative that they're using. Also, this is an oil base, and specific bacteria bacteria or pathogens tend to grow much more rapidly in water rather than in oil-based formulas. So I'm really not concerned about it. I don't think this is a big deal, but I could see people freaking out about this because technically it's not what you should do. Next, let's look at this detox face mask for $22. It claims to be a blend of clays, but it also has some ingredients that make it slightly hydrating. This looks like it would be a thick formula on the skin, so like it would be one of those chunky ones. However, not super, super drying to the skin, like something like the Aztec healing clay. Again, when we look at the ingredients, it is water. We have kaolin and betonite clay, which are both fantastic at wicking away oil from the skin. We do have glycerin, which is a humectant and a hydrator. We have some fillers and some texture enhancers, some propanediol, which helps the product penetrate deeper. And then we have sea silt. This sea silt automatically reminds me of like those dead sea masks that the people in the malls would like try to sell to you back in like the mid to late 2000s. Does anybody remember those mall kiosks? That's what this reminds me of. We also go a little bit further down the list. We do have some charcoal powder. We have some apple fruit extract, which is very interesting. Um, again, we do have sunflower seed oil. They had to shove that kiwi scent in everything, so shove the kiwi oil in there. We have some inulin, which is interesting, and then some sodium hyaluronate, which could technically hydrate. However, in a mask, um, I don't know if I would put sodium hyaluronate or hyaluronic acid in a mask personally, but maybe there was some stabilization reason for that. And we've got some like filler ingredients like xanthan gum, copolymers, etc until we hit our preservative phenoxyethanol. So when originally looking at this, I was like, hey, this actually isn't a bad mask for someone who has oily skin. Again, there's nothing in this mask that is going to overtly clear acne, especially if you have cystic acne. However, masks, especially masks that have clay in them, have been known to get rid of oil on the skin and can kind of secondarily help people with acne because there's not as much oil on the skin that the bacteria in your face can eat that turns into a breakout. So I'm not actually that mad at that. The formulation looks pretty decent, but then I was like, hold up. This is like a less beneficial version of the Dermalogica Charcoal Rescue Mask. I then pulled up the ingredients to compare them side by side, and again, Kylie Skin is basically taking a product that's on the market, took out the good, beneficial, slash expensive stuff, and just made a cheaper version of this. I mean, it's kind of like, it's kind of like the skincare edition of, hey, can I copy your homework? Sure, but change it up a little bit so that it's not too obvious. Literally, turn and learn those ingredients lists. We have the exact same base of water, kaolin, and betonite. And then Dermalogica actually goes in with the sea silt right there, front, top, and center, whereas Kylie kind of buries it down the list a little bit. Now, Dermalogica actually takes the initiative to include sulfur, lactic acid, and niacinamide. These are fantastic for acne, for exfoliation, um, for anti-redness, and a little bit of oil control in the skin. But again, they are more expensive, so obviously Kylie Skin was like, ah, we don't need the stuff that's actually going to work or that's proved by the FDA and medical studies. That's expensive, let's just take it out. Okay, okay. Now, when we look at the Dermalogica one, they have mandelic acid. What's fascinating about this is that mandelic acid is an AHA acid, so again, great for exfoliation, can help a little bit with acne-prone skin or with dull skin, but mandelic acid is derived from apples and pears. When we look at the Kylie skin list, you do have an apple fruit extract, but it's an apple fruit extract and not an actual acid that has been derived from apples. They both have that charcoal powder in there, and they both have tea tree oil. Tea tree oil has been proven in medical studies to be antimicrobial, 
antiviral and antibacterial. Um, full transparency, those medical studies do say that it's not a complete replacement for antibiotics and that more testing needs to be done, but this oil does have slight antibacterial activity and I really like it for acne prone skin. Only use it when it's diluted, but I've used it on my skin. Smell is kind of funny, but I do love it. It is in both of these and what's also interesting is that the Kylie skin has inulin. Inulin is a plant-derived ingredient. It's kind of like a sugar. It's technically a fructose polysaccharide. And what sugars do, they are very, very hydrating to the skin and they can impart some good benefits. What's interesting is that when we look at the dermological one, they also have a polysaccharide sugar-like molecule, which is galactoarabian. So again, if you haven't studied medicine or cosmetic chemistry, it's really easy to overlook these things, but when you get super critical and actually pick apart the ingredients list, you're like, wow, um, they're trying to copy other people and just switching it up so that it's not obvious. And again, I can't totally hate on that because that happens a lot in the cosmetic industry. There are machines called mass spectrometers where you literally put samples into them, it goes through, it looks at the chemical composition, the breakdown of that, and you can reverse engineer what was put into a product. This is also why fragrances are normally added to products so that it makes it harder to reverse engineer. So it's shady, but I can't totally hate on it for that reason. And on top of that, when we do look at the Dermalogica one, it's like, how much is it? It's 49 bucks. The Kylie Skin one is around half the price. And again, it doesn't have those acne fighting ingredients like sulfur. Kylie Skins is a very basic mask that's just going to wick away some oil on the skin. But for someone who's on a budget or who has oily skin that they're trying to manage, it's not completely horrible. Then let's look at the Clear Complexion Correction Stick. This is supposed to be a spot treatment. And when Kylie Jenner was actually talking about this on her Instagram stories, I was trying to be understanding, but I was also kind of like rolling my eyes because she has this giant filter on and again filters are great but skincare is better and I honestly have never seen Kylie Jenner with a breakout. I feel as an acne sufferer I feel like she doesn't get it and that makes the things that she says or she promotes about this line feel inauthentic to me and that hurts and I get that that's a me problem. That is not her fault. How I react to her or how I perceive her is not her business. That's on me. Um, her sister would actually be a better candidate. I wish that we could see Kendall Jenner talking about this since we know that Kendall Jenner has struggled with acne, um, but apparently Kendall Jenner also uses proactive and not Kylie skin <laughs> um, because when she made that announcement, I thought she was coming out, but apparently she just, you know, was coming out with the fact that she had acne. I was like, okay, there you go. But again, those are my thoughts, my opinions. And when we look at this clear complexion stick, I was actually shocked that Kylie seems to know what's in the product and kind of how some of these active ingredients are beneficial. And again, when we look at these active ingredients, it is interesting. This $15 product does have that salicylic acid, which is again, great for acne. It does have glycolic acid, which is one of the smallest alpha hydroxy acids, penetrates really deep into the skin. This does have witch hazel, which I don't hate, especially alcohol and witch hazel in spot treatments. Um, they're actually pretty good ingredients because they can dry out a pimple, especially if it's localized, tea tree oil, which we've spoken about that I really love, and again, fragrance-free. However, Kylie Skin is not telling us what percentage of these ingredients are actually in the product. And again, not every single company will do this, but I feel like, especially if you're looking at a treatment line, The Ordinary, The Inky List, Murad, even Glossier, they are telling us how much of their active ingredients are in here. And the fact that Kylie Skin is not sharing this makes me think that there's not a lot in there, or it's not going to be super beneficial, or it's not going to be super helpful. She did say that there's cucumber and lavender in here, which she claims are soothing to the skin. I do like that we have some aloe leaf powder. Again, that is dried aloe vera that is rehydrated, put into a product and can kind of help to soothe the skin. Um, and again, looking at the ingredients list, this is not a bad product. I was trying to think of what other product is similar to this, because again, this entire line feels like a money grab, feels like a PR strategy, and it feels like they're trying to just copy other products and make them cheaper, which is good for the consumer, and you know, earn money from it. Um, the closest one that I could come up with is the M61 Power Sport Blemish Lotion. It's an overnight spot treatment, and it also does have salicylic, it has that tea tree, it has glycolic, it also has the cucumber. It's $16, um, so it's about the same price, but you do get a larger amount, which is nice. Um, the Kylie Skin is 0.17 fluid ounces, or five milliliters, and the uh, Power Sport Blemish Lotion is one fluid ounce, so uh, it's substantially more. 
But again, there are some differences. I don't think that these are complete dupes, unlike the sunscreens, which, dude, Supergoop could sue over that. I filmed a video on it, like, weeks ago, didn't post it. If you want me to, I could get my ass over to editing it. But overall, is this collection worth the money? Shockingly, it's not half bad. These are three products that I would consider buying. Do I think that they are going to clear your skin? Absolutely not. These are not for major acne sufferers, but for someone who has a little blemish here or there, these could work. Again, they're not my favorite. There are many other products on the market that I do think are better. There are others that are more effective and at the same price point or cheaper. However, I do like that she's taken some good stuff, mixed it around to try to change it up a little bit and sell it at a lower price, which again, protects the consumer. Um, it does feel a little bit concerning to me because they're not disclosing how much of this active is in there. It doesn't seem to be a lot. I also feel that it's very inauthentic. I have a hard time believing that Kylie has dealt with problematic skin. I know the dermatologist she goes to, I know the places that she goes to get her facials, and some of the procedures and treatments she does, which includes different topical treatments or even different injectables. And again, I don't think we should shame people on changing their looks or opinions. Plastic surgery and fillers are a whole different conversation than what we're having here today. But again, I'm not shaming people for that. Go to those derms, go to those plastic surgeons, get it. Just don't sit here and tell us that this skincare line has transformed your beauty when you have tons of filters, when you have tons of contacts, and when you have appointments with these other professionals that are doing more for your skin than this product line is. And also, show me your face with a blemish. I've never seen Kylie with a blemish at all. And the little 14-year-old who is struggling with her skin, all of her insecurities, and her entire life that is still inside of me feels very betrayed by that. But that is also my feeling, my projection onto her, which she is not responsible for. I feel like the chemists did step it up on this launch. Um, again, very surprising. If you were to go out and purchase these, I don't think it would be a bad thing. I think that these are pretty decent to add to your routine. And again, if you love Kylie, if you want to support Kylie, these products are very redeemable. Again, especially after the walnut scrub, they literally did a very strategic marketing plan of trying to destroy people's faces just so that they could sell them the antidote. Let me know about the sunscreen video. If you want another ingredient breakdown or want to learn a little bit more about ingredients list, we've spoken about them right here. And be sure to turn that like button blue if it isn't already. If you're new here, make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss new uploads on the science of skincare and biology of our beauty. And overall, do remember to be beautiful both inside and out. I love you, and I can't wait to see you in the next video. <laughs> love you guys. Bye.